Yes, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, to, uh, today, I'll be discussing about OCT and neuroophthalmology. Uh, so as it has been already discussed that OCT is a non-invasive, non-contact technology based on low coherence interferometry, and it produces a cross-sectional view of the retina. So earlier, there was a time domain OCT which uh, used uh, 810 nanometers of laser light, and it was a very slow OCT, so it produced only 400 A scans per second. There was a resolution of 10 microns, and it uh, scanned up to till retinal pigment epithelium. But then came a four-year domain OCTs, which were categorized into spectral domain and swept source OCT. In spectral domain, this uh, A-scan speed increased. So it increased to 27,000 to 40,000 A-scans per second, and resolution also increased to 5 microns. And we were able to visualize choroid with enhanced depth imaging mode also. In the swept source OCT, the speed further increased to four, uh, 1 lakh to 4 lakh A-scans per second. And because it used a longer wavelength of 1050 nan nanometers, so we can visualize the choroid uh, very easily and with high resolution in swept source OCTs. And the resolution was also good, which, which is 5 microns. So this is a classic OCT uh, picture. Uh, what, what does it look like? So it has various components like that will be discussed later on in OCT and glaucoma. So what is the role of OCT in neuroophthalmology? So in neuroophthalmology, OCT represents a surrogate marker of neuroexonal integrity in the F afferent visual pathway. So it helps in the diagnosis, disease monitoring, as well as prognosticating. We, have, we can tell the patient what, what will be the prognosis based up, up, upon the OCT parameters. So it is the most valu valuable structural parameters that we measure in uh, neuroophthal are RNFL thickness and ganglion cell layer thickness. So we're talking about multiple diseases and the role of OCT in those diseases. So first is the optic neuritis or multiple sclerosis, in multiple sclerosis. So OCT can be used as a quantitative tool to monitor the course and treatments that we can objectify and we can measure the uh, retinal nerve fiber layer thickness now with the help of OCT in such patients. So in uh, patients who are having multiple sclerosis and they're also having optic neuritis, so there will be initial spike in the retinal nerve fiber layer thickness. Why? Because of the exoplasma flow stasis. So there will be edema that will be seen in the OCT. So RNFL thickness will increase. But the problem lies that it masks the earliest signs of exonal degeneration because the degen exones are also dying. So it masks the earlier signs of exonal degeneration in patients with optic neuritis. So macular OCT scan is a very important scan which gives us the values of uh, ganglion cell layers which actually quantifies what is, uh, what is happening actually in the disease, whether the exons are dying or not in adjunct to ret retinal nerve fiber layer thickness. So for example, this is the case in which we can see that the in the left eye, the uh, average retinal nerve fiber layer thickness is 125 micrometers, which is more than the normal range. But when we did, uh, which is seen in cases of optic neuritis uh, in multiple sclerosis in the initial phases. But when we did the macular cube of this patient and we saw the ganglion cell layer thickness, we can see that actually the exons are dying here. The ganglion cell uh, loss is there. So not, not only re retinal nerve fiber layer thickness is important, ganglion cell layer thickness is also important in patients with multiple sclerosis and optic neuritis. So these are the various studies which uh, help to corroborate this uh, thing. So there is an entity called neuromyelitis optica spectrum disease. So uh, optic neuritis can happen in multiple sclerosis patients also, and there are other entities like neuromyelitis optica and myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein uh, spectral disease, spectrum diseases. So OCT can also help to differentiate between uh, uh, optic neuritis present in NMOSD and multiple sclerosis. So what are the differentiating features? The retinal nerve fiber layer thickness is affected in all the peripapillary cord in contrast to uh, the most common quadrant of temporal uh, quadrant in multiple sclerosis. So the first initial quadrant which is affected in multiple sclerosis is temporal, but in uh, neuromyelitis optica, usually the, all of the peripapillary quadrants are affected. 
the mean retinal nerve fiber layer loss is 20 micrometers in multiple sclerosis patients, whereas it is 55 to 83 micrometers in neuromyelitis optica patients. So all the, uh, the visual deterioration and the uh, signs and the investigative uh, measures will be higher in cases of neuromyelitis optica. So the RNFL loss is also higher in neuromyelitis optica. And there will be higher uh, prevalence of microcystic macular edema in neuromyelitis optica. Uh, spectrum disease, disorder, eyes. Coming to the ischemic optic neuropathy, so OCT can be used to identify the treatment effects. The thickness of the macula OCT and the ganglion cell layer complex, complex is expected to provide a better structural indicator of exonal preservation or loss. So it can corroborate with the visual field findings that we see in altitudinal visual field effect in cases of ischemic optic neuropathies that can be corroborated with the ganglion cell loss, which can be seen on OCT. So this is the example uh, of ischemic optic neuropathy in which we can see that in acute stage, optic nerve swelling causes retinal nerve fiber layer thickening and which masks the uh, exonal loss. However, uh, ganglion cell to internal limiting, uh, internal plexiform layer analysis, they show, showed an abnormal thinning, which is an indicator of exonal loss. Similarly, in this case, we can see that uh, the patient, uh, which is diagnosed with left eye uh, non-arthritic ischemic optic neuropathy three years back, and shows thin thinning of the superior and suprotemporal quadrants. So it also helps to differentiate between acute and chronic ischemic optic neuropathy. In chronic, there will be loss of retinal nerve fiber layer as well as ganglion cell layer, whereas in the acute, there will be retinal nerve fiber layer thickening, but uh, decrease in the ganglion cell layer. There is a flow effect which is seen with OCT. That means then when the retinal nerve fiber layer thickness reduces till 30 to 40 micrometers, then OCT becomes of no value because uh, there is a, the retinal nerve fiber uh, layer thickness, it levels out. So uh, in advanced cases, when the ganglion cell layer and the retinal fiber layer becomes less than 30 micrometers, so we need to uh, get visual fields in such patients rather than doing an OCT. After MS studies, future role of OCT in other neurodegenerative diseases, that is Parkinsonism, Alzheimer's, is getting established. Coming to the papal edema, so change in the optic disc edema over time can be better quantified by seeing RNFL thickness. So it is helps in monitoring the treatment effects uh, in cases of papal edema, whether our treatment is working or not by serially doing the, these OCT scans. So RNFL measured with the traditional OCT scan cannot differentiate whether disc edema is decreasing due to reduction of intracranial pressure or ongoing axonal loss. So decrease in the ganglion cell layer thickness indicates that Zones are indeed dying off. So this is the OCT picture of a patient with the unilateral disc edema. We can see that the uh, sorry. We can see that the thickness here is 224 micrometers in the left eye, and there is we can see that white color coding uh, in the RNFL thickness, which is a thickened. And uh, but we when we saw the uh, macular uh, cube, it was normal. So it was a classical case of uh, unilateral disc edema. And uh, we can serially monitor the thickness in such patients by uh, doing the OCT scans, whether the RNFL thickness is decreasing or not. So this is the OCT of the swollen optic nerve head. So the, there are various studies that have proven that the, in cases of a papal edema, this is the uh, RP, RP line. And it becomes uh, deflected towards the vitreous in cases of papilledema, which helps in differentiating papilledema cases from optic disc drusons also. That this RPE line, it gets angulated and it shifts towards the vitreous. In papilledema, the RP Brooks membrane is commonly deflected inwards in contrast to the eyes with non-ischemic optic neuritis or in patients with optic disc uh, drusens. The RP Brooks membrane angulation is presumed to be caused by elevated pressure in the subarachnoid space and it does not correlate with the amount of retin uh, retinal nerve fiber layer swelling and resolves as the papilledema subsides, so this angulation also resolves. 
the basic differences uh, between papilledema and optic distrusions are there is a thinning or even the normal values of retinal nerve fiber layer and ganglion cell layer in cases of op optic distrusions, whereas in papilledema, the retinal nerve fiber layer is thickened in the initial stages. And in the optic dis disc drusen, there is a subretinal hyporeflective space between the retinal pigment epithelium and choriocapillaries. For buried optic distrusions, enhanced depth imaging and strepsosocity are of more of value. So this is the example of uh, optic atrophy in which we can see it helps in uh, uh, assessing the patients with the optic atrophy also in quantifying. So we can see that the thickness uh, has decreased to 48 and 51 micrometers and below that the OCT in the advanced cases is of no value. Similarly in the ganglion cell layer thickness also it has decreased below the minimum values. In OCT and pituitary tumors, so we can easily see nasal hemiretinal ganglion cell layer thinning, which is reported in pituitary tumors without visual field defects. So without having any visual field defects in pituitary tumors, now uh, OCT is becoming more of a value because we can see that the hemi nasal ganglion cell loss, is, like in this figure, we can see that the nas in the nasal quadrants, the ganglion cells uh, are getting lost and it can corroborate with the visual field defects also. So important points to consider that different machines have different pr protocols. So patients should be reviewed on the same machine using the same scanning protocol. And all OCT, OCT measurements are compared to the normative data of the Caucasian subjects, which must be considered. Actual placement of the measurement area should be checked and amended manually. That is, segmentation should be proper in order to analyze the report.